This is objective 10, recover clear text document. For this challenge, we're given an encrypted PDF document, the encryption tool, the debug symbols, and we're told that the file was encrypted December 6th between 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. UTC time. So before we dive into trying to reverse this crypto tool, let's just run strings on it so we can get a general idea of what it's doing. I'll make this window a little bit bigger. So if we scroll down in strings, we can see com communicating with the internet. Looks like it's going to elfscrow.elfu.org and it's posting to some APIs. There's retrieve and there's store. Keep coming down. We see DESCBC and we see some ASCII art, which is very nice. So I want to see if that is a real web server. So let's try going to that in the browser. And sure enough, it is. And we can try one of these API endpoints. And we're not doing a post, but it seems like this is a real web server that's working. So there may be, may be more to the challenge if we mess around with the web server, but I'm just going to focus on uh, reversing the uh, crypto tool. So I did attempt to do this purely on Linux um, with Radar 2 and with Ida. But in both cases, you're going to end up needing a Windows OS to import the PDB file. So it's easier to just bite the bullet and do the whole thing in Windows, which is what I've done. So I set up a Windows VM and I've downloaded Ida Pro, or Ida Free rather, and I've got my uh, Elfscrow files here. So let's try running this binary and seeing what it does. Come into the desktop and run Elfscrow with no arguments. We get the usage and we can see it's got an encrypt and decrypt. Encrypt is in expecting an in file out file and decrypt is expecting the same but also a secret ID. So let's try actually encrypting a file with this. throw the encrypted one in var.txt and if we open up open up foo see we can read that if we open up bar see it's gibberish so it does look like it encrypted it if we read our output we can see our seed our encryption key which is eight bytes it says that it's elf screwing so we can assume it's sending our key to that server and it spits out a secret key Let's try to decrypt our bar.txt. Give it the ID. And we're going to throw the decrypted one in Baz. So, retrieved our key from the server, decrypt it, put some nice ASCII art there, and we can read our file. So, it does seem to be. A working binary. So let's open it up in Ida and see how it works. Once we get the file imported, don't forget about the PDB file. If you go up to file, load PDB, give it that, and that'll load in some comments that'll make it easier for us to reverse. So let's go ahead into the main function and we'll do this in text view because I find that a little bit easier to work with and start stepping through this. So at the very top we see some strings for the different uh, parameters. There's help, version, encrypt, decrypt, ID. Okay, keep coming down. Okay, and now towards the bottom of the function, here's the end of it here. Uh, we can see some function calls. So here's the call to the usage. Here's do encrypt, here's do decrypt. So we're interested in do encrypt, so let's step into there. And same thing, just scroll through it, and read the comments, and see what it's doing. 
So generator did an encryption key. We see a function call for generate key. Fail for DSCBC. So there's that algorithm again. So that's likely what is being used here for the encryption. Uh, we see store key being called. We see that ASCII art. And we see a call to write the file. So let's go back up to the generate key because that sounds interesting. Okay, the elves are hard at work. We see super secure srand and super secure random. Uh, before srand, we see a call to time. And given that the challenge took uh, gave us the time that the file was encrypted, it's pretty reasonable to assume that time is part of the seed. So it's likely being passed into this function and then it's spitting out the uh, actual seed for this. And then we come down to super secure random. Uh, this function call is actually in a loop. And this looks like to be the uh, if statement. So if it is equal to 8, then it's going to jump out of the loop. Otherwise, it's going to continue. So this is probably generating our 8-byte key. We step into super secure random. Uh, we can see exactly what it's doing. We can convert these hex values over to binary by right clicking and going down to this option. So, can't really tell what it's doing. It's multiplying the initial value with that, and then it's adding this larger number to <laughs> that value, and then it's doing a bitwise shift and then it's anding it together and returning that value. So let's just go ahead and take that number and throw it into Google. And the first result, linear congruential generator. I think I said that right. We come in here, let's look at the Ruby implementation, since that's what the hint gave us as a framework. And we can see there's our first number, there's our second number, there's our shift. And I assume that that is the same as this. So it looks like it's using this algorithm and it's using specifically uh, the Microsoft implementation of it. So that's really good to know because now, now that we know the function that they're using, we can write our own program that'll do the exact same thing. So let's go ahead and go back over to Linux. And I've already gotten this written, so let's walk through it. So just like what we saw in the other one, actually, let me get these side by side so it's a little easier. So just like we saw here, we're going to, for each byte, we're going to take it, multiply it by that number, 214,013, and then add that number, and once we have that, we'll end it with this value, and then finally, we'll bitwise shift it uh, 16. And you have to end it by this value for some reason. I really don't know, but luckily, uh, the hint told us to do that. So we'll do that, and the only thing left to really do is to figure out our seed. But if we come down, I'll explain the rest of the code. So down here where my cursor is where, is where it actually starts. So it's going to open our encrypted PDF file. Um, it's also going to take one argument, which will be our seed. Once it gets that, it'll go ahead and run that generate key function, which is this 
uh, linear congruential generator. Uh, it'll grab the, the key and then it will attempt to decrypt it here. If it does decrypt it and out has a length greater than zero, it'll write it to a file with the same name as the seed, so we know which seed it uh, generated the file, and hopefully we'll get a PDF doing this. So let's go ahead and run it. And yeah, here we go. So I did this just to uh, generate the seed. So since we know the two dates, um, before we run this, um, I'm just going to spit out the output so you can see what this uh, outer loop is doing. So it's printing all of the uh, epic times between the first date and the second date, and it's using the date command to generate those. So you just pass in the uh, 12, 6, 2019, the time, and then the time zone, and it will do that. And just one thing to note, since I already know what time we should be looking for, I just threw in 2020, but um, by default, given the time range that the challenge gave you, you would have started at uh, 1900 rather than 2020. And then all we do is call our solution, and we pass in the seed. And while that's running, run ls and we can see that it's spitting out some files and if we run file on that command or uh, on that file we can see it's a PDF um, for a lot of these it will just be random data but you'll get one that's a PDF and when you do then you've gotten your answer so we can go ahead and open that up and since we can read it I think we did it right and the key for the challenge, it was asking for um, what was the name, and it was a five-letter uh, sentence. So go ahead and copy that, and we'll come back over to our challenge, paste that in, and if we did everything right, all right, we got the clear text document.